Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, we are going to continue on with our JFMT lathe. I think we're up to part nine or, <laughs> I think it's part, part nine or 10. Anyway, so what we're going to achieve today is we're going to reassemble the tail stock and then we'll start on the um, carriage next. So, it's a bloody blowfly getting around in here. Bastard. So I think we'll start with the uh, rear end clamp bolt. This is the one we had to do the repair on the, on the or modified the end of it in the earlier video um, as part of the casting had been dropped. And I, I'd assume it had, had been dropped. Mind you, I had to straighten these as well. So, okay, so we'll get our shaft back in position. A bit, of, a bit of grease on everything first. Bit of lube, never hurt anything. Okay, so we've got to get everything in in the correct order here, otherwise it won't work. So we've got our spacer, let's put a bit of grease on that just to hold him in position. And the grease will stick that in there. pull bolt oh and our sleeve now we've got a the sleeve only fits in in one location so we have to align the screws Looks like it there. I'll just slip these grub screws out so I can confirm they are uh, in fact in the right location. That should go in a bit. Uh, there we go, there we go. Just needed a bit of a jiggle. Okay, I'll just nip them up. Mm. 
Okay, that's the rear lock installed. Okay, so the front one is the one that has the, it's the main clamping one, the one that has the lever to activate it. Um, this only actually goes in one way because the handle has a taper machined in it. So it won't go that way. So this has to sit that way. Bit of grease. Actually this end here I'll put oil. Because there is a button oiler on this side but nothing further in so oil them up. Make sure she goes in nice. Make sure we haven't muddled up our location. So it's that way. Bit of grease on, on the cam. Bit of extra in the other one. Okay, so it's just a dog point set screw underneath here to Okay, now that locates the position. And of course that handle will go in that way. Right, we have our clamping base plate in position. A tailstock base ready. I've oiled the top of it. We've got our side adjuster screws in location ready. And the top half We've oiled up underneath and we've got the adjuster nut in position. And of course all our studs all oiled up. So we'll get it set, we'll get you sitting back in the cradle, well the camera sitting back in the cradle, and we'll, we'll get it all lowered down. Now I've got, um, there's a, a bolt goes front and rear, up from underneath, and they just hold the whole assembly in position. So before we get too far, slip these up into position. Okay, so we need to get these bolts started. Still want to be able to move it. I need to get our adjusting bolts in now. So 
plenty of oil on the threads and, and up the shanks too to prevent any corrosion. It's probably the only time they'll ever get it. Okay, they're started. Okay. So we still have a gib strip to put in. Let's get our locking bolts and nuts in position first. So we'll just slide it back a bit. So these are on a, a oh, like a, a dish, slight radius so they can self-align. One here, one up the other end. We'll have to bring it forward a bit to get to get underneath this one. Okay. So we just nip these up till there's uh, only a little bit of play in the base and we'll adjust it once we get the handle in position. Okay, we don't need this chain block anymore. Okay, that's all good. So, next part we'll get our quill sitting in position. Okay, so I've pre-oiled everything, all up in the bore and pre-oiled the quill. Now these are a really snug fit, this is. Um, this is like a lapped finish inside the bore. I mean, there's absolutely no play, no wiggle room whatsoever. That's tight. But really good. Now I did get asked the question regarding the oil grooves that I put in here. So let's bring you in a bit closer and I'll give you a um, bit of an explanation. So if we look on the top, we have two oilers, two uh, button oilers here. Now these are from factory. 
So this one oils the threaded rod which operates the quill and this, come, this one at the rear um, comes down to the uh, bearings and whatnot for the gear drive mechanism, the two speed mechanism. Now the bore of the quill, the lapped bore of the quill extends through to about here, to the end of where I've machined it. So originally there was no way to get oil onto the quill. So hence, when we stripped it, if you remember, if you watched that video, there was a little rust line on the six o'clock position where the keyway, the anti-rotation key slot in the quill runs. So that's why I cut a full length groove up most of the way up to about here. So now I can have a pool of oil that sits in that groove in the housing on top and it should eventually work its way around. So at least it gives it half a chance now. Now I did get asked the question why cut the groove in the casting here instead of the quill? Well the quill is a chrome plated hard item so you don't want to go messing around with that and the other thing is too there's a wiper seal on the front of it, uh, a felt wiper and that would create an opening if you had a groove or slot cut in your quill so that's what you don't want I mean there's already one underneath you don't want extras you know so um, the other thing too about the oiler like there's no way to oil a quill because if you oil the outside of the quill most of the oil is going to get wiped off by the felt wiper on its way back in so it's um it's a bit of an issue and I'm glad I caught it before any damage was done inside so okay so what we can do next we can get all the gear drive assembled up in the end and all it fitted back in then we've got a lock to put in and um Oh yeah, we're getting there. So the quill nut can go in now. Break out the ratchet. It's been a good ratchet this one. I brought this one back in the mid 80s. Good old snap on bit of gear. Mind you, she's been, she's had a few kits through it in its life. It's done a lot of work. These are just lightly nipped. Okay. So let's get our two speed box assembled. So we have the main lead screw, which has a thrust bearing on the end here. That slips into the end partially. Then we have another thrust brace on the other side. They all plop in there. The locking ring and nut. And there's a keyway. Now we've got to get this gear on the right way around. So the gear has to engage in the shifting fork. Ah, you bugger. 
Remember it was a bit of a fiddle to get apart. Okay, now the lock washer. And then the adjuster nut. If I was able to look straight on, it would be a lot easier, but trying to do it without, I'm bending around the camera, <laughs> trying not to get in the way. Okay, that's started. So this lock nut um, adjusts the um, bearing float. So we don't want that overly tight. We don't want it loose either. So we just want to just take up the slack. No preload, no clearance. Now we'll try and find a locking tab that's going to line up. Probably if we tighten up a little bit more onto this one. starting to get a bit firm that so we've only got a little bit to go oops too far that's it and I can see there's markings on there so that's its original um, location so I'll just bend this lock tab down Oops, the camera bump with hammer. Okay. So our gear can shift freely on the shaft. And they're the dogs to, um, to engage into the other gear. Okay, so the next part we've got to put in is this other gear assembly. This is a, a sort of a very similar to a back gear on a lathe. So it just has this little bush that sits in first. So I'll probably have to set it in with some grease to hold it in position. down our gear. So 
So the gear goes in this way around and our shaft like so. This just taps in. Like so. So when it's in direct drive, which is there, this gear the dogs on this gear engage with the dogs on the hand wheel gear and when it's in back gear this comes along and these engage together and then this gear drives this gear. I think that shaft's got to go in a tad more. So now the other drive gear can go in. So this has another thrust race, which will, just the thrust washer. And of course, lube up the shaft. It goes in like so. Let me just, just going to put a bit of grease on the face of this. Whoops. I don't want to use any sealants or things like this. This actually just sits just above the oil level, so. And you've got to get it around in the right orientation because there is an oiler, button oiler on the top. So I can oil the whole show. Right. Okay, so we got four cap screws to hold that in position. They actually hold the whole gearbox onto the machine. Well, actually, before that goes on, ah, yeah, I see. Nearly got caught out. Hmm. We actually have to bolt this housing up first as the mounting cap screws are covered over by that housing. Okay, so let's head back over to our tailstock and we'll get this bolted up to the main housing. Okay, just a bit of grease on the face, prevent rust and helps seal it up a little bit. Now, get our thread started. I wonder if I can set the hand wheel on now so I can wind it in a bit easier.
Okay, that should do it. We should be able to push the quill forward now. Gonna find the Allen key for it. Right, now the drive gear. This also has an oiler on top to, to be able to oil the shaft. Plenty of grease around it to help seal it off. Should be a good feature to have this two-speed tailstock. Remember the amount of times you put a um, cheetah bar through the hand wheel, the lathe, like when you're, you're pushing through a, like a two-inch drill bit or something like that. This makes life a bit easier. Okay. So, a hand wheel. Okay, this is just a graduated collar. Bit of grease inside just to keep it lubed up. I had it in the lathe this morning in this in the old shop just to give it a bit of a polish up. Okay, high speed, low speed, high speed. So I'll just have a cover plate that goes off here, uh, on here. 
So I'll put that on off camera. It's sitting in my car at the moment as I was going to take it down the local automotive paint shop to try and get a colour match done on it so I can get a little tin of touch-up paint and just go over a few spots on the machine. Yeah, so I think I mentioned this earlier. I can't remember. Must be getting old and senile. So I've got to adjust up our lock bolts underneath and then this will lock and position. They're the two nuts that, that are underneath the locking plate. But what I've got to do is fix this bodgy thing up here. This looks to me like it's a, used to be or started life as a extension bar or something like that out of a socket set. So I'm going to cut off about that much. I'll cut all that knurling off and we'll put our caterpillar um, lever knob in its position. So I'll thread the end so it'll look quite in place. These are actually a really good knob these. So, so once I've done that then we'll do the adjustments underneath. And they're the only adjustments to be done. Oh sorry our gib strip's got to go in. Let's just pop that in now. Well, what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. And that's exactly where my gib strip is. No idea. Could be over the other shop, as I think I was. Took it over there because I had to do some repairs to the adjusting screws. One of them was broken, so I have to make another one of these little pesky gib adjusters that go in the side of the tail stock there so that's as far as we can go for now on the tail stock so sort this gib strip out make the other adjusting screw cut the felt way wipers out and do the adjustment underneath and of course the locking handle and the side cover so there's a few little jobs to do on this but the bulk of it's together so before I go on with the carriage I might actually slip in and put the um, compound slide back together because quite a cesspool going on behind me I'll swing you around so you can see so when I can't see the top of my workbench for the mess it's time to pull up <laughs> and reorganize so I can find things find all the parts that we need to get our compound slide back together. There's a piece of it there. Um, there's another piece of it sitting on the boring mill bed over there. And there's a bit over there. So let me get all that sorted out and we'll bring you back for round two of this episode.